Uh, the Wisconsin cross country team will head to Norton, Ohio for the 2024 NCAA Great Lakes Regional this Friday, hosted by the MAC Conference. The Wisconsin men enter this weekend ranked number nine in the country, while the UW women check in at number 14. The Badger men are coming off of their 55th Big Ten title last or 10 days ago in Champaign, Illinois, as Bob Liking won his fourth consecutive Big Ten title, while the Badger women finished third. Director of Track and Field and Cross Country, Mick Byrne, is here, and we'll take an opening statement from him. Coach? Thanks, AJ. I know it's, uh, as AJ said, 10 days removed from Big Ten championships. Um, still uh, resonates. Um, winning a Big Ten title uh, never gets old. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And very proud of uh, both teams. Both squads had a great day. Women finish in third to uh, Oregon, ranked second in the country, and Washington, ranked third. So uh, real proud of them. Um, we always said going into the meet, if we can beat all the old Big Ten teams, then that would be a really good day. Um, obviously, with Washington and Oregon in the conference, uh, they've raised the bar, and it's great to be uh, uh, to have that challenge looking as we move forward into uh, the upcoming years. Um, on the men's side, again, very proud of the squad. Um, executed the plan to perfection. Um, had a couple of guys that uh, sacrificed their individual race. And uh, for the team, at the end of the day, all that matters in a, a championship race is the team title. Hello. Um, congrats on being named the coach of the year. What, what does Thank that mean you. to you? You know, I mean, when you look at the uh, great coaches that we've had here at, uh, at Wisconsin and obviously in the conference, um, proud of what we've done, been able to accomplish over the years uh, to win 14 out of 17. Um, feels really good. Um, as I just said, it never gets old. Um, but the standard is, uh, you know, coming up next in two weeks, uh, national championships. First of all, we got to get through this weekend, the regionals. But um, we've got some great momentum uh, as we head into uh, these last two races. So really exciting. Just having the championships in Madison, first time in several years, how much of an incentive is that for these people to kind of qualify for the possibility to compete? maybe in front of some friendly fans and things like that. Yeah, it's huge. Um, you know, everybody on our squad, we're on the men's side, we're probably 10 deep, um, which is we haven't had that depth in a while, and that's exciting. Um, same on the women's team, we're probably eight or nine deep. Uh, every one of those kids, we can only run seven at the national championships. Every one of those kids want to be in that race. There's, there's no doubt about it. Um, as as you all know, we have a great fan base. Um, just look back on uh, 2018, and uh, yeah, we had the individual winner on the men's side, Morgan McDonald, and um, certainly on the women's side, we had uh, Alicia Monson, who had a great run, and uh, um, you know, the fans came out to cheer on the team, cheer on the individuals, and that's obviously something that uh, every single kid remembers. They've seen the videos, um, the highlight reels of the, of the meet, and everybody wants to be part of that. Um, our fans show out in, in huge numbers. I think that's one of the reasons we uh, were awarded the meet again um, in great atmosphere, and we put on a great show for, for sure. Um, so every, everybody on our squad wants to be part of that. Coach, you look at what Bob Liking did 10 days ago, winning his fourth straight Big Ten title, only one of two guys in Big Ten history to do that. I mean. How impressive is what Bob's done, you know, at the conference level and for this program? Yeah, well, you know, the Big Ten Conference has been around a long, long time. Um, only four individuals have won four titles. Um, and only Bob is one of uh, two now that have won four consecutive titles, uh, Bob and uh, Craig Virgin, the great. Uh, the other two guys, um, you know, Kevin Sullivan and... Um, Trying to think of who the third, the fourth one is. Um, I know you're going to tell me, AJ. Uh, Kennedy. Kennedy, Bob Kennedy. I mean, all of those individuals um, went on to have incredible professional careers, and to be mentioned in the same sentence as those guys, I think, is uh, testimony to, you know, how great of an athlete Bob really is. When I 
you know, think, look back on last weekend and him winning the fourth one. Uh, takes me back to his first one at Penn State. Um, it wasn't planned. He just hit a flyer, as we say, and, and uh, three miles into the race, he took off and, and uh, was kind of reminiscent of, of how he won last week also. We knew that um, he was under tremendous pressure uh, going into that uh, race. He wanted to win for sure. Um, he knew the... Uh, the other big names that have uh, won four in a row, and uh, he wanted to uh, be part of that. So um, the manner in which he took control of the race at 5K uh, is very impressive. Just wonder. I know Chris McIntosh has talked about the possibility of fewer scholarship athletes across the board around the school in future years. I'm just wondering how has that impacted the number of player, number of people you're going to be signing this week, or maybe in future classes, and how much concern there is about just the impact of the house settlement. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, in terms of cross country, uh, right now we're about to sign two kids. Um, we don't generally uh, have huge classes, particularly on the men's side, on the women's side, a little bit larger classes. Um, the NC2A set limits of 17 for both men and women's cross country. Um, on the men's side right now, we're at 16. On the women, we're at about 24, 25. So impact the women more than the, than the men. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, we could only take 12 last week to the uh, Big Ten Championships. And so that was leaving almost uh, 12 kids at home. Um, I don't think you ever want to do that. Uh, I suspect the Big Ten will, will uh, bring that number down in terms of the number that can compete at the uh, Big Ten Championships. Um, it's happening around the country. Um, so, you know, with 17, uh, I don't think it's a problem. Coach, with the women's squad, placing third at the Big Ten Championships, what do you want to see them build on and continue to improve with as we go into the rest of the postseason here? You know, the the uh, the meet this weekend, the Great Lakes Regional, is uh, it's a beast that you love and hate. You have that love-hate relationship with that uh, you just want to get in there and uh, not be overly confident, but... Uh, at the same time, know that uh, you're always looking ahead for uh, you know the next week. We only have eight days uh, on the women's side. Uh, we stay at 6K, so um, 6K uh, this Friday and 6K at the national championships. Um, it, we, we run 6K the entire year, so when we've done pretty well over that distance, um, you kind of just go in, race, and, and survive it, and not get too carried away. Um, you know, we're in a good position right now going into into meet for both squads. Um, you know, I think anywhere one through four, um, we're going to qualify. We've got enough at-large points. Um, leaving it to fourth place uh, for either squad is is uh, it's tempting because you want you don't want your your athletes to leave it all out there this week with such a short turnaround for the national championships. Um, it, it's different for the men. We move up from 8K to 10K. So, um, you know, we've got so we got a very young team still, and uh, you know, we have to try to protect a couple of young young bodies before uh, in advance of the NC2A meet in eight days' time. So, our squad will change on the men's side going into the regional meet. Uh, we're sitting comfortably with a lot of points thanks to our performances at the Big Ten and and also uh, at the pre-national meet. On the women's side, the same, probably run the same squad, but uh, uh, try to, you know, not squeeze it too tightly. Coach, aside from Bob, you uh, had four athletes earn all Big Ten honorees at the Big Ten meet. Can you just speak on the depth of your men's unit? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, we, we the, the second, third, fourth guys, fifth guys at, at the Big Ten meet, um, they're obviously good athletes. Um, we knew we brought them in and out of the squad all season. Um, we didn't over race them. Um, we knew what we were doing. I know we took a lot of a lot of heat after not running the uh, the Nutty Com Invitational, but that was the plan all along. Um, uh, you know, Christian Naval, um, redshirt freshman um, out of New Zealand. Um, we know what he's got and. Uh, try to protect them as much as we could. Um, 
in by doing that, look at the result, right? Um, he got a little bit excited uh, with 800 meters to go on the race um, and paid it, you know, a couple of big milers. Our conference is loaded with world-class milers, ate them up over the last uh, 50, 60 meters. But um, the very exciting performance uh, by Christian Matan Ivory. Um, you know, goes back to uh, the recruiting process, knew what uh, he was going to bring to the table, just needed to be healthy. And uh, he showed what he can do. I think he's going to be better over 10K, and, and we're certainly going to need that. Um, and you could, down, you could down the whole lineup. Um, again, but as I said at the outset of this meeting, um, you know, a lot of our guys uh, sacrificed their individual plan at Big Tens. Uh, to make sure that race uh, didn't become a jog fest, and we wanted to get it rolling, and uh, we we thought that was our best chance to, uh, you know, to win, and uh, it was exciting to see them execute the plan.